Hey everyone, hope you're having a great spring semester. And I know it seems early to be talking about student leadership for 2013, 2014, but actually now's the important time to talk about it. You know, I had an epiphany a couple of years ago when the whole Toyota crisis came about with the Prius and stepping on the brake and it went faster and stepping on the gas and it didn't go at all. And it dawned on me at that point in time that sometimes we work too hard at solving problems after they've occurred. That if we spent as much time and energy preventing them, that we wouldn't have these problems. And I certainly think Tiger Woods and people of that nature can uh, concur with that. But anyway, I started thinking about how that applies to leadership. You know, I get so many calls about, can you come out in the summer? Can you come out in the early fall and train my leaders? And part of me thinks that maybe we're dealing with too many, too many problems after the fact, that maybe we should spend more time choosing the right leaders and less time training the leaders that we actually chose. So anyway, as we approach the month of March and the weather begins to warm, we start to think about the fall and you start to begin that leadership selection process. So I've had so many requests to talk about what I did and how I do it and why I do it. I thought I'd share it with you now. Now, so my leadership selection process um, was really a five-step process. And what I did was I reverse engineered the problem. I didn't think about what leaders I wanted. I thought, what are the qualities of the leaders that I want? And then I developed an application that would both serve as a filter to keep kids who didn't match that out, but also attract the right type of kid to it, kind of like a magnet and a filter combined. Basically, I decided there were five qualities that I wanted for my leaders. One, I want them to be organized and efficient. Number two, I want them to be problem solvers and have initiative, which is a tough thing in band, which is a world of do what you're told when you're told. I wanted them to be advocates for my program. I wanted them to be service oriented and I wanted them to be fun. I mean, if we're going to spend all that time together, we should laugh and smile a lot. Band is hard work, but band should also be fun. So what I did was I created a leadership selection process that had five steps. Step number one, you have to submit an application process with a resume. It shows me you've got your stuff together, you're organized, it shows me what clubs you've been involved in, but more important, it's educational. It teaches you about resume building, but it teaches me about you. Number two, you had to answer three questions about um, problems that were occurring in the band. Maybe how do we get kids to practice more? Or how do we get kids to show up on time? How do we get kids to commit to service? But the point was by asking three questions, not only did I get three solutions to the problem, but now every kid who applied knew those were three issues that I thought stood between us and success. It was a win-win. Number three, I wanted kids to be advocates for my program. So what I did was I had them interview someone on campus about the qualities of a good leader. Now, as you can imagine, most kids interviewed the football coach or the principal or the associate principal or the English department chair. Well, the point was I used to tell my kids, it's not about what you learn from them. That's your 15 minutes with them to be an advocate for the band. Not only did those kids advocate for the band, but then that department chair, that coach, that principal would come to me and say, what are you teaching in band? It's brilliant. These kids are all wanting to know about higher level leadership skills. Again, a win-win. Fourth thing is I made the kids do a service project as a part of being um, in applying for that position. Now that service project needed to be a minimum of an hour long, but preferably an hour and a half. Now the beauty of this is these kids learn about service and what that job is, but also whether they get selected or not, I get service projects done for the group. And I would tell kids, don't ask me. You need to see it for itself. Again, service oriented, but showing initiative and problem solving. And the last part was the number five. It became legendary. It simply said this, dazzle me. That was it. Now the kids are very uneasy the first year you do this with what does that mean? You don't answer the question. Do something that shows me your personality, your style, your finesse, your splash. I had kids, one year I had a kid put 2,000 post-it notes in my office, um, each with a different reason why they should be a leader. And when I said, How'd you get into my office last night? He laughed and said, oh, I'm a leader. I'm not telling. I had one day I picked up the phone and John Williams was on the other line and it said, I'm John Williams, the composer, and I'd like you to choose John Smith as your drum major. Can you imagine what that kid went through to get to John Williams? Uh, one day a train went by and there was a sign on a moving train that said, choose Bill Smith as your trombone section leader. We have A Mountain in our town, Arizona State University, and one day a kid turned A Mountain into Band Mountain. The point is, I want kids to show me their style and their personality, but my favorite was this. One student cut up his five-step application process into five pieces and sent me on a scavenger hunt for it on five separate days to get one piece a day.
Now, when you think about this, if a kid can get through that process, if they can get through that process, then they're probably the right type of kid to be successful in that process of being a leader. If they go, I don't want to do all that work, I don't have enough time, and I don't want to do the service project, then they're probably not going to be successful in my vision of leadership. Remember, this reflects my vision of leadership. One, organize. Number two, show initiative and problem solving. Number three, be an advocate. Number four, be service oriented. And number five, be creative and be fun. Now, this isn't the right way to choose leaders. It's just my way of choosing leaders. But the point is, choose leaders with a purpose. Decide what you want before you choose who you want. Once you know the what, choosing of the who is so much easier and that the training becomes so much easier and effective when everyone's on the same page. Now, it's a different approach. It takes about four weeks. Week one, I hand out the applications. I usually did that spring break so that the kids, if they were super busy type A kids, which they all are, they would have a week to work on it during spring break if they chose. The next two weeks they had to complete the project. So it was three weeks from the day I handed it out. And then the fourth week, after I accepted the projects, I would um, collect all the data, I'd interview the drum major candidates, watch them conduct, and I would announce on Friday of the fourth week. So typically on around March 10th, I would hand the projects out, and around April 10th, I would announce the leaders and begin to train them for the coming year. Now, I hope this gives you some food for thought. Um, and attached to the email that led you to this link, um, is my actual application. Please feel free to use it in its entirety. Use it in part. Copy, paste it. Don't even credit me. I just want you to use it. It's being used by uh, programs all over the country and it seems to be fairly successful, but it has to work for you. So you have my permission to change it in any way, shape, or form. Now, if you have any questions about this process, how I did it, or why I did it, or you want to talk to me about it, just pick up the phone and call me at 480-577-5264 or shoot me an email at scott at scottlang.net. It's never too early to plan for success. And I think by spending more time in the preparation and selection process, your next fall will be among your greatest ones ever. And that's what I wish for you. Take care, everyone. Good luck. I hope you enjoyed this webisode and uh, have a great week. Bye, everyone.